What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Ty and Seki in the house, newest member of the Bills Mafia. What's up, man? How you doing? Nice right. to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Thank you for having me. So you finally got the contract. Mm -hmm. Long time coming for you. So first of all, how's life for you? How's the offseason been going? What's going on man, with you? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. Offseason been going good, you know, getting acclimated to the playbook and everything with the OTAs and offseason workouts, getting acclimated to my new teammates and coaches and everything. So, you know, it's good. It's good. Traveling a little bit, you know, get to come out here once in a while. There you go. Visit you guys. Yeah, happy yeah. to have you here. You're hitting, you. hitting up the Bahamas pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, you've yeah, been yeah. Trying, trying to get to. that warm weather in trying for to. You know, I'm Nigerian and I'm from Texas, so Golly, I'm, I'm a little go. tropical, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go to Buffalo to mm -hmm. sign. But I guess football situation over yeah, the weather. Yeah, you know, hey, the best fit. And That's you got cool. a great squad coming in exactly. there, too. So exactly. we were just talking off camera, really good vibe. Mm -hmm. You've been around many different teams, whether it's professional, indoor, minor league football. Mm -hmm. What do you like about these guys in Buffalo? So Man, far? you know, the vibe there is, is great. You know, from the top, it's, it's more family oriented, not, not, you know, boss, supervisor type. It's more family, like we're in this together. Mm -hmm. So I, I enjoy that vibe. When I first got there, I felt that when I first got there through the community and through the staff. So, you know, hopefully that'll that'll feed into into the building, get into our blood, and, you know, we can put some wins on the, on the uh, football field. And those fans are pretty wild in those yeah. Mafia. Yeah, they're, heard, they're pretty starving for wins. Yeah, I know, I know. So, so you guys got to deliver that. Yeah, hopefully we can. <laughs> hopefully we can. Yeah, should be interesting. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your background, Nigeria and Texas. Yeah. Take me all the way back. How, how does football first come into your life? Oh, man. So I was born in Brooklyn, you know, Crown Heights. Mm. We trans transferred to uh, Texas when I was five. And, you know, I was one of the biggest kids growing up, you know, and I was athletic, so I played basketball at first. And just, you know, guys, you know, out there, you know, you do, you know, whatever the weather permits. So if it's nice outside, we go play basketball, football. So I guess I just ran with my friends, and, you know, one day, an optimist coach came into the, the auditorium and was like, you know, sign up for this. So I was like, I want to do this. <laughs> so that was, what, fourth grade? Fourth grade, I decided wow. to play football. And I was, I think, eight years old then. That's I mean, it, you must have been a monster on the basketball court, though. I, you know, I was nice. I was all right. Yeah. I was all right. Yeah, good back, good back inside when, game? Yeah, you know. I, see, I was more of a guard. I oh, was a 6'8 guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 6'8, I mean, 300 pounds. Yeah. Not, but... not 300 pounds, though. Yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. I was that jumper. Oh, it was nice. Yeah. You know, I was decent. I was decent. decent. Yeah, I was decent. I like it. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, my game didn't, mm. you know. Didn't I, exactly pick exactly, off the way you exactly. wanted. Exactly. So, football you know, kind of made football, more sense. Football, yeah, football <laughs> made more sense for my lifestyle and for, for everything else. <laughs> well, especially in Texas, too. I mean, football is religion there. It is. So it is. when did you start to realize, and when do you also realize that football could be the thing to propel you years forward? My junior year in high school, that's when I started to take it serious. Started to actually get in the weight room, you know, that, that summer. I, sophomore year going into junior year, I actually took the weight room serious mm. and took my craft serious and started getting developing, you know, the skills needed to get to the next level because I was hearing that I can play, but I didn't, you know, I wanted to play basketball. But when I put basketball on the shelf, I was like, okay, I'm going to take it serious. Exactly. And that's when I, fortunately, I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship, mm. and, you know, pursue it there. And I'm sure you just used your size and strength for a long time, yeah. just being one of the biggest dudes. But yeah. then there's that other level where you're like, you know what, if I'm going to go to college for this, if I'm going to get a scholarship, my family doesn't have to pay for anything. Yeah. I got to be serious exactly, about this. Exactly. So you go to college, mm -hmm. go to Texas State. Yeah. What do you remember the most about that experience? Oh man, it was fun. So the ratio down there, women to men, was eight to one. Oh wow! So it was a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, <was> a beautiful <laughs> thing. <laughs> but yeah, so unfortunately, you know, I was there for a year, a year and a half, and you know, I got some off field, off the field trouble, and I had to leave there. So I went to Tarleton State after that mm -hmm. in Stephenville, Texas, and I did about a year, a year and a half there. And the coaching staff was in flux, so I kind of didn't want to stay there around because the coaching staff that came in, didn't we didn't see eye to eye on a few things. So I decided to hang up football for a little bit. And then, you know, fortunately I was able to come back to it with the arena circuit. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to a tryout in uh, 2007. I went to a Desperados tryout. And Joe Alvazano, the late Joe Alvazano, mm. he gave me a, you know, gave me a few tips on, you know, he was like, you're pretty good. We want to sign you, but you have no film. So he told me Arena 2 was the best option at Corpus Christi, and that's how the whole Arena trip started, wow. Corpus Christi. Yeah. So what were you doing in between when you weren't playing football? Uh, I was working security, you know, finding little gigs here and there, you know, just to be able to pay pay the bills, you know, because $100, yeah. Yeah, $100 a week what we paid, I think.
16 games, that's what, $1,600, you know, that's not any money, so. No, definitely yeah, not. Yeah, so. so what were some of the biggest challenges when you're first starting with that Corpus Christi's team, whether it was the living situation, the mm -hmm. playing situation, what sticks out in your mind? Oh uh, man, just, you know, humble, it was really, really humble beginning. So I just had to humble myself and realize what I was there to do. It was to one day get to the NFL. So I just knew I had to focus, you know, cut out all the distractions. I understood that, you know, this is temporary. So right. don't don't dwell in what's going on. Don't dwell in the circumstances. Just deal with it. Get do what I need to do and get out of there. Where were you guys playing those games? Uh man, what was the name of the stadium? It was an arena down in Corpus Christi. Okay. I cannot remember the name of it. Wow. Like, how big a crowd are we talking for that type? Uh, of? It was nice. It used to pack, it used to pack out yeah. uh, about six, seven thousand. It used to pack out. It was where the college Corpus Christi. Okay. Um, what is the name of the college down there? Corpus. I can't even think of it. Corpus Christi used to play their basketball games. I so. gotcha. So whatever arena that was, I can't even recall. I think Bank of America the, the arena. Well, that's, a, like that. that's a nice. That's a yeah. nice size crowd. I mean, yeah. like your high school games. I'm sure you're getting. Yeah, you what, know, we you were know? getting about the same, about right. six, th five, six thousand at high school. So it was cool. That's awesome. So yeah. how, how do you take the next step after your Corpus Christi experience? Um. So after that, I get a few phone calls because I, I was playing pretty good. So I get a few phone calls for um, the Desperados. Well, they changed their name to the Vigilantes uh, in a couple other places. So I decided to go to the Vigilantes. I played there. Um, that team followed A little more me. money now, are we talking? Yeah, okay. about 100 more, two more dollars. <laughs> so now yeah, it's like $200 yeah, a year. So, <laughs> so it's like $300, $400 after right. before taxes. So I played there. I turned my shoulder. Oh. Yeah, I know. So during that time, I got a phone call when I'm rehabbing my shoulder. I get a phone call from the uh, Dolphins. So they were like, when you get healthy, we're gonna bring you in for a workout. Now this was a few months before the lockout happened. Okay. So I was healthy. I think it was uh, right after Christmas. I went out there and I worked out for him. Um, Brian Gaines was the the player personnel. Now I think he's the GM in Chicago. Right. So yeah, he was telling me they were gonna sign me. So he was like, just chill out. A couple of days we'll sign you. A couple of days come, I had the lockout. That bad time. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, damn. So then I went. After that, I went into uh, I went and signed with um, the Philadelphia Soul, and that year goes I play and Ron Jaworski, same yep. same thing, and, you know you should be playing somewhere, you know I'm like okay, so I'm I go, just waiting for yeah, my chance. Yeah, here. so I go ball, nothing happens with that, so I'm back to square one. So I'm like I really don't feel playing arena football is doing it for me. You know this is three years now, right? Uh, nothing's shaking. So I'm like, okay, I'm coming back home, little money. You know, my life is on pause, basically, mm. you know, because, I mean, it's cool when I'm getting paid for living and sure. paid for food, but when I get you back home. You want something more than that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. For a few months, you know, outside of the, you know, five months outside of the 12, you know, it's not really worth it. I'm not in college anymore. I'm getting older. Right. So. Because you're, what, mid-20s at this point? I think I was like 24. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was 23, 24. So, you know, time is ticking. Yeah. So I'm like, what am I doing with my life, you know? Right. So. I um, get in contact with some people I know in Dallas, and then I get with a, a record exec. So now he wants me to be personal security for a few acts that he yeah. has. And they have like a big tour that they're doing like on the West Coast. So he's like, yeah, come do this. You know, it's for X amount of dollars. I was like, oh, so here we go. Like, here. Here's some money for Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I was like, oh, I could do this. This is and less taxing on my body, you know, right. less, less demanding, all that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm just about to sign up for that, and then I get a call from um, San Antonio, mm. the Talons. They're talking about they want to bring me in, want me to play. I'm like, well, I got this I opportunity. I got this nice gig here. Exactly, a great gig, yeah. you know, great opportunity, great money. I was like, if y'all can't match that, it'll do better. I, there's no point in I'm playing out. football. Yeah. Exactly. And it was like, I'll give you a call right back. So the next day they called me. They doubled it. Wow. I, yeah, so I was like, okay. All right, now we're talking. <laughs> one more year. I give it one more year, yeah. right? So I go down there, ball again. I get a call from uh, Indianapolis Colts mm. at the end of the season. They want to bring me in for another workout. Okay, do the workout. This is a week into training camp now. So you know they just called to bring in camp bodies. Right. So I was supposed to be a camp body, right? So you know, I knew that. I was going in there, you know, I'm gonna be a camp body, but I'm, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to stick. So they throw me in the game, and I didn't really know the plays. It's a week <laughs> into, you know, a week into training camp, you know? So I'm like, all right, <laughs> whoever is in front of me, I'm just gonna put my hands on, you know? And fortunately, you know, I was able to stick. So that was the beginning of my NFL career right there. Wow, so yeah. who was that first game against? Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm. Yeah, no, no, 
St. Louis Rams. St. Louis Rams. St. Louis Rams. Louis Rams. So yeah. what do you still remember from that day? I just remember whoever was in front of me. I, he just, I just made sure he got the business. Just got him <laughs> through this day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Didn't know Tell me which way to block. Didn't know any of the calls. I'm talking to my guard the whole time. <laughs> what do we do? Which way am I going? I was like, man, I'm just out here. <laughs> and this is Andrew Luck under center, right? Uh, no, nah, I was third string then. Oh, man. Nah, okay, nah, I got Luck you. Wasn't, nah, they wouldn't put, they, they wouldn't put him in my hands. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I got you. Yeah. But even still, like you get this taste of the NFL and mm -hmm. it, it's not a secure thing still. Not at all. But and it you're was still just bouncing the, around. It was just the fact that I was able to get the opportunity. You know, there right. was a glimpse of hope, you know. Right. That's all I needed. And you finally got some tape too. Yeah, right. right. Okay. So you have the Indianapolis experience. Yeah. It doesn't stick. No. What's the next step after that? So after that I played St. Louis claimed right. me. So I was with St. Louis for that year. Uh, I played it three games that year. So it was it was interesting, you know, being able to actually play in a professional game, Real and seeing game. how the regular season is and all the stuff that comes with it. I was like, man, it was a little overwhelming. It, I'm was. Sure it was, yeah. So yeah. you know, I had, it took me a minute to take it all in and kind of understand that this is a job now. You know, it's fun and games, and you know, I'm excited to be here, but now I got a job to do. So as trying to grasp the playbook, trying to grasp everything that goes with it, traveling and finding a place to stay and everything, you know, it took me a little bit. So when I finally started getting my bearings, you know, I guess that patience ran out with me. So, you know, they brought in um, Jake Long. Mm -hmm. And then that following season, I was competing to stay on the team. And I broke, well, I almost broke my ankle. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I just slightly fractured it. Somebody fell on me, you know, stuff happens. That always happens with yeah. the linemen. Yeah, so I slightly fractured it. and. Then shortly after that, they, they waived me. Mm. So, you know, that was that was the beginning of understanding this, how this business goes. That's the real NFL exactly, right there. Exactly, exactly. So when you think about the Rams, who were some of the guys you were close with? What are some of the experiences that still stick out? Man, I, you know, Roger Saffo was my guy. We hung out a lot. Um, Joe, uh, what's his last name? I don't even know Joe's last name. <laughs> Just Joe. Joe, what is his last name? He was the right tackle for the Chargers. Um, Jesus. I can't even think of his last name right now. It's all good. Barksdale. Okay. Yeah, Barksdale. Yeah, yeah that's my guy too. So you know, I've kept in contact with uh, Joe. Actually, I don't. You know, I don't call him by his last name, so that's why I know his last name. But yeah, I talked to Joe about last year. I think last year. I think he had an album coming out, something like that. Mm. Yeah. So you know, Joe's an interesting cat. But yeah, I keep in contact with a few guys. And just that. to reflect where you guys were mm -hmm. and where you're now too. Like, there's a lot that's happened in between. Yeah, a lot. Side. You know, Joe's got a big contract. Uh, I don't. I, I don't even know what Joe's doing. Now. I don't think he's with the Chargers anymore. I can't. I can't tell. Roger got. A, he just got another big mm. contract. Yeah, Roger's doing well. There's a need so, for guys like you, but still, it takes such a long time just to stick. So again, here you are with the Rams, a couple mm -hmm. games, you get waved, and then you're still bouncing around between teams. Yeah. What was the most difficult part of not being able to get back in the NFL for a little bit and still having to play in other places? Um, well, the last time when the phone stopped ringing was when I got released from uh, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. The phone stopped ringing, so I had to make a decision. Like, what am I going to do next? And it's kind of hard to go from here and especially what people think of you right you know here to back to reality so I wasn't ready to go back to reality yet so I was like man I still I still have some football left in me you know I'm not ready yet so Canada called mm. that's when I go to Montreal yep so I go to Montreal and I realized the Canadian system and how that works there was an experience about it, I, it what was, was the an, craziest part of that experience? It, it was an experience um we had to pay for our game gear Wow yeah I How did. much did you guys have to pay for your uh, game? It was, it was, it just depended on what it was. <laughs> but like so, helmet, shoulder pads, nah, pads? No, that they supplied. Okay, so what were you All paying? the other accessories, like, you know, it's cold up in Canada. Yeah. So the cold weather gear. Oh, so like your jackets and all that stuff. No, the oh, game. just like the Under Armour's game, Yeah, said? the Seriously? game wearing gear you had to pay wow. for. It. Yeah, the under sleeves, <laughs> the, the long Johns. Long Johns. Yeah. So we're like, all right, we'll give you the bare essentials, but yeah, everything but else underneath you got to pay for. Exactly. Wow. I, that was the first time ever, even in the arena ball, they, put, they gave it to wow. us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, even oh gloves gosh. we had to pay for. So I was like, okay, all right. This is how it goes up here. I don't know if that's how I, that's how they did it in Montreal. But just in this situation. Yeah, all so right. I don't know. But yeah, that was different. That mm. was real different. Interesting. Yeah. So you had that experience. What mm -hmm. about the LA Kiss situation? I was there for a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I was. I got there what Monday, and I was gone Thursday. <laughs> 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 so it's just on, it's on the resume. It's but on I was the resume. yeah. It's just another team. Yeah, because when we were leaving to go to play a game, the Redskins called me right back. So mm. yeah, I was I was there less than a week. 
That's yeah, I wasn't awesome. there at all. I got you. So yeah. Washington ended up becoming a home for you, yeah. but you were you were signed, you were released. That's I don't know what that was about. Yeah, what was so up they, with that? So they signed me, and then right after the draft, they released me. Then I guess they realized they made a mistake. And, like, we got to bring this guy back. Yeah, I don't know. They they must have called around the league and seen that there was some offers. I don't know, because mm-hmm. I was I was going to go to a workout for the Detroit Lions. If they didn't call me, I was going wow. to Detroit. Yeah. So who knows how that chapter would end. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But yeah, I was on my way. Like, so this, this wild and crazy road continues. You finally stick in Washington. Yeah. How do you start to take the next steps as a player? Oh, man. I got with uh, Bill Callahan and pretty much honed my skills. Mm. Realized what I needed to do, what I needed to, do, to not do to stay in the league. And you know, kind of just narrowed it down what I, what my strengths were, and I just made my strengths the best parts of my game. So when you think about defenders around the league, mm-hmm. who are some of the toughest guys you've gone against? Oh man, uh, Chandler Jones. You know, we've had our battles. I played him what three times. Mm. Uh, Olivier Vernon. You know, that's that was strong dude. Yeah, that was every 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 season. I've yep. seen him twice. Twice so, a year. Yeah. Man, strong and slippery. So you know, there's a few guys in the league. You know, just every day you gotta bring your lunch pail. Yeah, because these guys are big, but they're also quick. Yeah. And that's the toughest thing yeah. as you're going into your pass block. I mean, you know, you can and then also there's relentlessness. Mm-hmm. So there's no, there's no, oh, I got him and it's over. Right. You know, like once you got him, you got to wait for that counter. So you never, never could sl- fall asleep on the job. And these dudes aren't taking plays off either. Of course not. <laughs> I mean, everybody's getting paid. So, you know, we're out there to do a job. So 100 miles an hour. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So I had Kelechi Osemele here from the Jets. Okay. We were talking about his, his favorite blocks in his career. The pancake block yeah. is where you guys make your money. So. Yeah. What are a couple blocks that come to mind? Maybe Washington, maybe somewhere else where you're like, mm-hmm. I took this guy and I just destroyed him. Oh, man. Um, there's been a few times when, you know, I, I got guys, I, I, I probably, you know, this, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. <laughs> come on, you got to. Just right, got to brag for one story. There's a few times when, you know, I realize guys aren't that strong. So I kind of like block them with one arm. Just one to, arm blocks? Yeah, just to show them, just, on, just to show up on film. Wow. Yeah, I kind of take my hand off the block and just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just extend it, you know, just let them know. Yeah, so, you know, it's a few things. And because yeah. those film sessions yeah, yeah, of course. are constantly getting critiqued, but especially, if you, you show the one arm? Especially, you know, Trent and Mo. Oh, you yeah, know, those yeah, guys going to rag day, on you. Of course, and you know, Trent, one of the greats. So, you know, of course, he always has something to say about what you got to do. So I got to, you know, live up to his standard. I mean, that's a flex right there. Yeah, it is. Not a little bit, guy. a little bit. Yeah. 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 What did you learn from those guys, Mo? Oh, Trent? man. Well, you know, just with Trent, the work ethic, you know, what it takes to be elite in this league, you know, just seeing how he goes to work and how he takes to his craft every every day. It's just, you know, it's a constant, constant build to the season. Like, I just take that and I try to apply it to my game and just, you know, little things that he does, little tricks, you know, I add that to mine. And Mo, you know, just just how he, you know, he's really, he's really, really cerebral with his, mm. with his approach. So, you know, I just take that and apply that too because I think he has a, a photographic memory, mm. if I'm not mistaken. I don't have that. It's good but to have, though. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. But, you know, I try to take, you know, different pieces and, and apply them to my game. Definitely. So yeah. what about playing with Kirk Cousins? Oh, man. What Kirk, stands out for Kirk, that? Kirk was my guy. Yeah? I, yeah, I, I enjoy playing with Kirk. Yeah, you know, he got rid of the ball quick, and he was real commanding of the huddle. He's a, he was a great guy. It's yeah, funny, because people kind of bag on him as a leader. Yeah, I don't, no, he's gets a great vocal. guy. No, he, see, th- people have different opinions on leadership. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not really a rah-rah guy myself, so I can understand, you know, you don't, you can lead by example also on how you take on different aspects of life and, and the game you know that's that's leadership also you know people can can use your experience and that's considered leadership you know you don't necessarily have to tell somebody how to do it right. or will somebody to do something just that's set the example exactly yeah exactly so you know I try to take take the same type of approach and you know so I mean he's a great guy though he's a great guy that's awesome. So going into this offseason, I'm sure finally you felt a little security because mm-hmm. you had some good game film, good NFL experience. Mm-hmm. Why did Buffalo make sense, and where were some of the other places you were considering? Oh, man, Buffalo made sense. You know, it was a, I felt like it was a great fit as far as my skill set. You know, it's they're, they're more of a power type game. You know, they want to do ground and pound and quick, quick pass games. So I felt like that works, and it's, it's great for what we're doing. You know, they wanted a bigger type offensive line. You know, of course, I'm, I'm a bigger type offensive lineman. So I just, you know, it just, it just, it just meshed well. It felt like it's going to be the best fit that I got going. And you're blocking for Shady McCoy now, exactly, too. Exactly, exactly. He, you know, he's a good guy too. That's my guy. And we, you know, we, we talk a little bit. Me and Frank talk too. So we're trying to build that relationship up. It's going to be a good thing. Who have been the best running backs that you blocked for during your career? Well, you know, I had a Hall of Famer last year. Yeah. Yeah, AP. That must have been pretty interesting. And especially when he scored the, um, I think it's 100th touchdown. Yeah, you're yeah. right there for it. Told him. Look, 
I just want to invite. I just want to be <laughs> at the Hall of Fame speech. I don't. I just want to be there. You know. I led you to the end zone, man. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't lead him. I was there. I helped you. He did most of the work. You know. I just want to be there. You know. When you take that picture, I'm on that line also. Yeah, there you, you know, go. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's always nice when you guys get some love. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Those are the shiny players. Yeah. They're making headlines, but it's like, hey, how do we get to the end? Zone? You know, I just want to be at the award, the ceremony. That's all. Just at the That's ceremony. That's your one caveat. That's it. That's all I want. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So let's talk about what you're doing off the field because okay. you have your football camp back in Texas, your mm -hmm. foundation. You've done a lot of stuff off the field in general. So just tell everybody at home what we got going on in June and why okay. is that so important to you? June 1st is the third annual Tyneseki Foundation football camp. So, you know, there's no, you know, there's a few guys in the NFL right now currently who's from my hometown. You know, uh, Miles Garrett, Luke Jokel. You know, there's a few big Those names. Some guys. good names. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they're all from Arlington. Um, Fred Turner back in the day. So, you know, we got a few few good names. So nobody really comes back and does camps. You know, the only one, Von Davis, he does a, a Von Davis, Von Miller. Mm -hmm. He does a, a Von Miller day. Right. But nobody else really, you know, everybody does camps, but nobody else really does camps at Arlington. So, you know, I, I kind of take the initiative and I put on this camp and also kind of trying to bridge the gap between the police department and the community as well. So I had the police chiefs come in there and kind of talk to them about, you know, what they expect and, you know, what what they're trying to do and, you know, just opening up that, that communication, the line of communication. Because, you know, I don't really want the kids to grow up being afraid of the police. Mm -hmm. and I don't really don't want the police coming in kind of, I don't want to say being afraid, but being unaware of what they're dealing with with the community. You know, just you know, just because you see a group of kids doesn't mean that they're threatening, you know? Right, don't assume anything. Exactly. Yeah. So trying to bridge that gap a little bit. And, you know, it's been helping. You know, every, you know, I've, we've gotten great results. So we're going to continue doing that and hopefully continue making strides in, in the community. And just having that dialogue is so important because so many assumptions are made. It is. And there's not enough communication exactly. between the police and the community. Exactly. There used to be. But there isn't the same thing anymore. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the disconnect when when the disconnect happened. I don't know, but you know, ho hopefully, this helps in some way. That's awesome. Yeah. So, what kind of work are you doing with the foundation outside um, of the camp? So we do giveaways. So I did a Christmas giveaway. Uh, I find uh, three less fortunate families, and I donated a thousand dollar giveaways. So at Walmart, um, I do other giveaways. We had a Thanksgiving giveaway hmm. uh, for the what was that, two years ago? The Dallas Police Department, for the families of the lost uh, officers, mm -hmm. we gave uh, a few tickets to the families to come to watch the Cowboy and Redskins game. You know, That's awesome. And do different things. So this upcoming fall, we're doing a backpack drive, and I'm also doing a golf tournament that the proceeds are gonna go to a scholarship later on next year. That's really cool. Yeah. Good luck. So I got a few things I'm, I'm Definitely. having in the works. So when you finally signed that deal, mm -hmm. was there anything big that you decided to get yourself after all this time? Well, I've already, you know, through the time that I've always been an entrepreneur. So like through the time I've been playing in the NFL, I've been working and having things set up to where, you know, every the little bit of change I was getting, I made it to where I can not have to worry about off the field. So I had things already set up, like I paid my house off a couple years ago. Smart man, so, yeah. So yeah, I've, I've just been sitting on the money. So now I got a, I have a lounge. I just recently bought another club, so I got a few things that I got nice. going. Yeah, so Diversifying the yeah, portfolio, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. So I got a couple things. So the, the biggest thing, I bought my mama's house. Oh, I there you bought go. Her house, yeah. Where was that, in Texas? Or? Yeah, it's in Texas. It's, nice. um, it's right around the corner from my house. Oh, that's but cool. Yeah, yeah. Her house is brand new, though. It's, <laughs> it's like five months old. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah. You hooked her up. Yeah, you know, got to. That's mama. Yeah, so. What, what was, was the good. most important thing you learned from mom along, along the way? Man, just how to persevere through adversity, you know, because it was just us. And we moved from New York to Texas, a foreign land, and she made it work. You know, never I never seen the lights off, mm. never seen any utilities miss being paid. You know, she made it work. So you know, just witnessing that, I got to do the same thing. I can't skip a beat. No doubt. Now I got a son, can't skip a beat. How old is he? He's three. So, you know, that's my lifeline. Like, yeah. I do all this for him now. So. Trying to make it work. That's why I got all this stuff going on off the field. Yeah, trying dude. to leave a legacy behind for him. Do you ever wonder what would have happened if San Antonio didn't come back with more money and that security gig would have happened? I probably would have did that. I probably would have gone and did the um, the personal security, whatever, the uh, bodyguard mm -hmm. for the the acts or whatever mm -hmm. for that company. Probably would have. That's where I was headed. Yeah. So I, I seen myself because I was talking to a few bodyguards who were bodyguards for like some main acts. And I was gonna get in that. I was gonna get an LLC and, and basically in that do world. that. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna do that for a little bit. So I mean, 
I think it worked out for you. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was gonna make some money now. I wasn't gonna sit on the side and be broke. That's not. I'm not doing <laughs> like that. That's not your style. Not at all. No, you're yeah, a grinder. Yeah. And I think the people of Buffalo are gonna find that out too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna have a great year this year. Awesome. Well, Ty, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Great to meet you. All right, everybody. See you next time. You're on the sit down.